we are uh, here today uh, to have a chance to listen to Rick and then subsequently to Dr. Ballard uh, about this most recent uh, new uh, set of information, some new clues uh, that will uh, lead us uh, on the next uh, step in this uh, historic search. Rick, thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. Wow. Secretary Clinton, Secretary LaHood, Secretary Lambert. It's such an honor to share the dais with you here today and to have an opportunity to tell everybody a little bit about what we've been up to. I do a lot of talks for school groups, and I'm often asked, what's the most important thing about searching for Amelia Hart trying to solve the mystery? So the most important thing is not whether we find the ultimate answer or what we find. It's the way we look. We see this opportunity to explore what Assistant Secretary Campbell has called the last great American mystery of the 20th century as a vehicle for exploring and demonstrating how to go about figuring out what is true, scientific method of inquiry. And that's what I talk about with kids. And I often encourage them to say things like, when someone tells you something, your response should be, oh yeah, who says? <laughs> that gets me in a lot of trouble with their parents. <laughs> but it's an important lesson. And critical thinking and peer review and debate is an essential part of what we do. And looking for Amelia is controversial. Amelia's life and career was controversial. That's good. That's not bad. I want to tell you a little bit about the process that brought us here today that resulted in this amazing day. As you may know, we've been working on this for a long time. We found some really fascinating and, to us, compelling evidence on Nicomoraro in the Republic of Kiribati. But the case is circumstantial. It's a strong case, we think, but it's circumstantial. Finding the airplane would be the thing that would make it conclusive. Okay. Well, last summer, one of our members, and let me digress for just a moment to say this effort by Tiger is often referred to as my effort and my team. That's not right. Tiger is an organization of hundreds of dedicated scientists, historians, enthusiasts. For us. We have a few of them here today, and I want them to stand up now and let us acknowledge the hard work for 20 years and more that they've put into this. Come on, guys. Show them who you are. Come on. These are, these are real people. Thank you. Thank you. So last summer, Bill Carter and I were in Tarawa talking to Secretary Lamborn and doing archival research, and Assistant Secretary Campbell happened by. <laughs> <laughs> you never know who's going to show up. And uh, we got talking about Amelia Earhart, and he said, why don't you come to Washington and brief our staff about this, because it sounds fascinating. So we did. And he very graciously said, uh, what can we do to help? I said, well, there's this photograph. And it's a photograph that was taken of the western shoreline of Nicomororo in October of 1937. Now, this was just three months after Amelia Earhart disappeared. There was a British expedition that visited the island. They weren't looking for Amelia. They were there to assess the island, uninhabited, for future settlement. And on their departure, one of the cadet officers uh, fellow named Eric Bevington, snapped a photograph of the island's western shoreline. It's to the right of Assistant Secretary Campbell here. And uh, we had had that photograph for, for many years because we had visited Eric Bevington at his retirement home in England in 1990. And we snapped a picture of his photo collection. It was one of many pictures in his collection. And, but I had always cropped the photograph because I was more interested in the shipwreck. Well, just before our 2010 expedition in Nicomororo, our forensic imaging specialist, Jeff Glickman, 
said that um, he wanted to review all the photos in case there was some kind, uh, there might be something of interest. And he called me and he said, what's the thing sticking up out of the water in the Bevington photo of the, of the west end of the island? I said, looked at my copy. I said, there's nothing there. He says, yes, there is. I'm looking at the original negative that you have. And there's something sticking up out of the water. So I looked and he's right. And it shouldn't be there. It's just a blob to me, but it's a little... And Jeff worked on it, worked on it. He said, I think this might be a Lockheed Electra landing gear. Okay, that would be interesting, because that's right where we think the airplane did land on the reef and was eventually washed into the ocean. But we needed verification. You know, replicability of results is the essence of scientific investigation. So when I had an offer of some help from the State Department, I said, sure, if we could have skilled photo analysts from the State Department take a look at this photo. We'll see if there's anything to this. And they did, and they gave us the results, and they said, you know, we think you're right. We, we think this, this might be a Lockheed Electro landing gear. The, the components are consistent. That's what you can say about this. And there's no explanation, other explanation for why it would be there. Well, that was a very important piece of information because it gave us, in search parlance, a point last seen. This is where the airplane went into the drink, washed over the edge by rising tides and surf. It gives us a point to start our search, and that set us on the course of finding the support from Lockheed Martin and FedEx and a growing family of sponsors to put together a really high-tech deep water search, something we've always wanted to do. We'll be going out there aboard the research vessel, University of Hawaii research vessel, I'm going to try to get this right, Kaimikai Akanaloa, usually known as KOK. I wonder why. And it, we're going to sail out of Honolulu on July 2nd. And it'll take us eight days to get down to the island. But we'll have 10 days on site. We're going to do a detailed multi-beam mapping of the search area. Now, these search operations will be conducted for us by Phoenix International, the Navy's primary search contractor for deep ocean search and recovery. Mike Cutslip, their president and CEO, is, is here today. And, and we're really grateful for their, for their involvement in this. Uh, the, the search plan, by the way, has been looked over and uh, some important suggestions and additions have been made by Dr. Robert Ballard, for which we are deeply appreciative. We'll make the mapping of the area. We'll search with side, really high-resolution side scan sonar mounted on an autonomous underwater vehicle, an AUV, basically a small robotic submarine. Interesting targets will be investigated by a remote-operated vehicle, ROV, with cameras, lights, manipulator arms. We'll search the entire suspect area. Now, reasonable people can disagree on the interpretation of evidence. And there are some very smart people who think we're wrong about this. But there are some very smart people who think we're right about this. And the only thing we can do is make a best effort to go and search and look and see what we can find. And it's the searching that's important. It's the trying that's important. And we've been trying for 23, 24 years now. Uh, I'm pleased to also announce that the Discovery Channel will be with us and will bring this exciting adventure to the American public with a television documentary special. You know, back in 1937, in the painful recovery from the Great Depression, Amelia Earhart's courage and determination inspired the American people. Well, hard times are here again. And we need that kind of courage and determination, what Secretary Clinton called the spirit of Amelia Earhart. And it has taken that spirit to pursue and persevere the way Tiger and our, our team have. And we're going to keep doing that. And we're going to try our best to find her, not for ourselves, but for you. Thank you very much.